Hello. <laughs> this uh, is a video of me, Pippin Barr, doing the activity called Spy Profile Generator. So, like always, I am going to be sitting here in my office and I'm just going to go through the activity step by step. Um, I think for the biggest benefit, it would be a good idea, as always, again, to kind of try and do things before I do them so you get a chance to see if you can figure it out for yourself. And then you can confirm or deny by uh, seeing what I do, assuming that I do things that are correct, which is uh, not guaranteed. Uh, so let's begin, partner. Spy Profile Generator. So I've got the activity itself uh, and its steps listed here. So let's uh, start at the start. Um, the objectives with this activity are to cement some experience with using JSON uh, data in our programs because it's fun, and also to be using the web storage API um, to save and load data to the user's browser. Um, these are just two things that go hand in hand, I think, quite nicely and open up a lot of possibilities. So the idea that I'm going to be working on here is a spy profile generator. Probably that's obvious. Uh, and the gist of it is that the first time that a user visits this program on its web page, it's going to ask what their name is. When you give it a name, it's going to generate a, a spy profile for you. Uh, it's going to generate that spy profile with r random bits of JSON data to create something hopefully kind of funny or at least interesting. Uh, it's going to create an alias, a secret weapon, and a password. And then every time you come back to that page later on, you have to enter your password in order to be able to view your top secret profile. So that's, uh, that's our objective with this, with this activity, and we've got the steps necessary to do it. As always, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new project uh, by using a template project and calling it Spy Profile Generator and putting it into our Activities folder. So I'm going to head over to my Finder. Um, as I often do, I am just going to grab this template P5 project that I grabbed from the website already. I am going to copy that on a Mac. You can copy files with Command C. I'm going to go into my Activities folder and we're going to paste it in there. Then I'm going to rename it. Sorry, I pasted it with Command V. Uh, always good to use shortcuts. I'm going to rename it to Spy Profile Progile, Profile Generator. Okay, then I'm going to open it in Atom, which is down here. Perfection. Uh, what else did it tell me to do? Uh, open it in Atom. Set the title of the project in index.html. Uh, this is a good habit to get into. Uh, that's why in this template project, at least, it's got a terrible title that you should change, and that tells you to change it. Um, you could call this spy profile generator, but let's uh, team with the theme and say that it just says top secret. Uh, hush, hush. <laughs> that's what spy websites look like. Uh, brilliant. So now it's got a title. And then commit the changes to your repository with the commit message. Um, I famously forget to commit during my project, but I will at least do this first commit. Uh, I am going to commit this using GitHub in my browser over here. And I'm going to stage these changes. I think that there are actually more changes here than just my spy profile because I've been doing other things. Uh, but I'll give this commit message um, just started spy profile generator activity. There we go. Obviously, you can do this in GitHub Desktop just as easily, or you can do it uh, in the console or some other way. Commit and push, and off it goes. Bye. Nice to see you. OK, that means that we're ready to get going. I will think about committing again. I will probably forget. So we've got a project, we're ready to, to go. So we need a plan for how we're going to develop this. Uh, fortunately, I think, and like, like most programs, if we think about them carefully, this breaks down into a number of steps that we can take. Um, there's the step where we want to think about really that first moment um, when the user arrives for the first time. We want to be able to get their name and just display a default profile uh, with nothing sort of in it yet. Once we've got that, we want to then be able to generate a profile 
with JSON data so that instead of just a default profile when they arrive, uh, they'll see like one of these generated profiles that we've been talking about. Once that works, we will figure out how to then save that profile after it's been generated and then load that profile when they come back. And then finally, we'll protect the profile with this idea of having a password check. Um, a not very secure password check, but nonetheless, <laughs> um, it's, it's there. Okay, so that's the plan. Let's go step by step. First thing is to get the user's name and display a default profile. So the key thing that we wanna do really to begin with, and this is often the case, is we need to think about what variables are gonna be useful um, in our program. And the main thing that we're gonna to want to keep track of in this program is this, the profile information, right? So the step here is we want a global variable. Um, I'm gonna call it spy profile at the top, and it's gonna be an object uh, containing properties that reflect the name, the alias, the secret weapon, and the password. And I'm gonna set them all to default values. That's gonna say redacted so that it's uh, kind of fancy. Uh, so over in our main script here, um, I will resist the urge uh, to delete all of this stuff. In fact, I'll, um, I'll fill this out. Spy profile generator is the name of the project. This is my name. Um, I would rather write a longer description here, but generates a randomized spy profile for the user and password protects it. That's what it will do, right? Now preload we will be using, uh, but we're not using it yet. So let's in here declare that variable. So I said I wanted a spy profile variable and in it uh, would be an object and that object would contain a property for the name and I'm gonna say that it just says redacted because that's very spy, spy language. A name, an alias, also redacted. Oh, almost forgot my awesome asterisks there. An alias, what were the other ones? A secret weapon, because spies uh, clearly always have that. Redacted as well. And a password. Um, I could start that as redacted. I'm not gonna, I am gonna display the password. Yeah, so we'll redact that as well. So. This is the object that we're going to use when the program is running. This is going to have all of the information uh, about the profile in it so that we can do things like display it on the screen, for example. Back over here. Now, when the user arrives, um, we want to ask for their name. So that's something we want to do as soon as the project starts running. So we'll do it in setup. Um, so in setup, the first thing is, of course, to create a canvas. Uh, we are going to be displaying stuff, so we will want to be able to uh, have a canvas that's there. So create canvas window width, window height, classic, classic hits. And then we are going to use a function you may or may not be familiar with called prompt. Uh, prompt is built into browsers and it allows us to pop up a little text box um, that asks the user a question and lets them type something in as a response. So we're going to call prompt and we're gonna assign the result of prompt into um, a variable, uh, which we're gonna, uh, oh sorry, we're gonna assign it into the name property of the spy profile. So the way that prompt works is that you give it at least one argument and the first argument is the string uh, that you want it to prompt them with. So the way it's gonna work is this. We are going to assign the result of this prompt into spy profile.name because we're asking them to enter their name and we're gonna assign it whatever happens when this prompt runs and it says, what's your name? Like that, right? What's your name? That's the question. That's not very professional. Maybe let's not do that. Agent, what is your name? Exclamation marks is very urgent. <laughs> okay, so that is then gonna pop up a message that says, agent, what's your name? With a text field that they can type in, whatever they type in when they hit OK, it's going to end up inside spyprofile.name. So that in this way, we're going to get their name off of them. Um, actually, if we run this now, we'll be able to see it working. So if we go to Atom Live Server and start it now, um, wait for a second, the program starts. You can see it still, still says loading because this is in setup. It hasn't run draw yet, so there's, there's nothing has been rendered. And you can see here it says, Agent, what is your name? Uh, and we can say, whatever, Pippin. Pippin Bar is my name. That is literally my name. And I hit OK. And then the program runs. Uh, and at least in theory, 
my name has been stored inside um, that secret, uh, sorry, the, the, the spy profile uh, dot name property. Okay, so that's how that works. Back over here. The final thing that we really need to do uh, is we would like to be able to see the profile. So um, we're going to want to be able to display text that reflects the profile. So the first thing is we're going to do this in draw, of course, that's where we draw things. We will set a background color. So let's set a background color down here in draw. Background, I'm going to set it to white because uh, we're going to try and emulate a kind of, you know, a, I don't know, a government document kind of feeling. Uh, and then use push and pop around text options for displaying the profile. So this is just, um, we, you know, we're going to want to display some text. So we're going to probably want to set some text uh, settings and we'll put push and pop around it all just in case later we add stuff. We don't want those text settings necessarily to affect everything else. This is just a standard thing we do in P5 to avoid polluting um, other commands later on. So push. Uh, I'm going to set the text font to Courier, uh, which is a good government font. Uh, in text font, by the way, you can actually do the kind of CSS style thing of doing a comma, as far as I know, and then specifying like another, maybe more general option, like a monospace font of some kind. I'm going to set a size of, goodness me, I don't know, 24, maybe. And do I want it to be bold? No, I don't. Um, and I'm going to align it, um, because this is a government document, I think I'm going to align it, align it horizontally on the left and I'll align it to the top uh, on vertically. That'll just make it a bit easier to position. Uh, so I'm positioning it by its top left corner effectively. Uh, and then I'm going to want to display some text, right? But I don't know what to what I'm going to display here. So I'm going to hold off on that for the moment. Okay, back to my instructions. Da, 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 da. So we're going to use text, as it says, to display all the values in the spy profile object. Um, there's lots of different ways to do this. We could, like, for example, there are four properties in the spy profile object. We could have four separate uh, text commands, right? We could say text spy profile dot name and then specify a position for that, uh, for example. And that will uh, hopefully, oh, I need to set a fill color. That would be a good thing to do as well. Fill of black. Uh, bar. So there you go. So there's my name, right? Um, so that worked. It's displayed. And then I could do the same thing uh, here, except for the alias. And I could, I, I would then need to display it a bit lower, right? I'll put it 100 pixels lower on the Y. And then I say, what's your name? And it says Pippin Bar. And then below that it says redacted because my alias was redacted. Um, so that's a that's a way of doing that. Uh, but this is an example where using a template string, um, as it says in the instructions, is a really good idea. So before we start drawing stuff, let's um, create a variable called profile and make it a template string. And what this allows us to do, because we know that template strings um, allow us to insert variable uh, values super easily, is we can actually write out the entire profile. Um, because template strings also allow us to have, um, have you know, uh, formatting, right? So I could say uh, spy profile, do not distribute, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this should say. Uh, so that would be at the top and then, and I need to be careful that I go back to the margin here. I don't want it to be indented. Um, I could have another new line and then I could say name. And then in the name, what I want to do is use the template string uh, special characters to insert a value. And I can say spy profile dot name. And then I can do the same thing for all of the different bits, right? Alias, I was going to say spy profile dot alias. Secret weapon uh, is spy profile dot secret weapon. Is that, that's a, got an S on it there, huh? Let me just quickly check that. I think I should call that secret weapon there. So the autocomplete there just notified me that it was secret weapons. I only want a single secret weapon. Uh, you may also notice that this thing keeps asking my name, which is sort of aggravating, and it keeps occasionally it will flip me back to the browser. Now, that's annoying. Uh, once it's already up there, it doesn't keep happening. It's just uh, if I dismiss it and then bring it back up. Back to here. Uh, the final thing was the password, right? So password spy profile dot password. 
So that will enable me to display all of the different properties in one go and store this whole thing, this whole thing here, which has got a formatted version of the profile into my variable called profile. That then means I can just display that single string. I can just say display the profile at 100, 100, for example, just so it's indented a little bit. And if I save that and head back over and enter my name, <laughs> don't know quite what happened there. Let's try that again. Okay, very good. So now you can see it says spy profile, do not distribute. And then it's got my name, my alias, my secret weapon, and my password, all of which are redacted because they're just using default uh, values. Nice, very good. So now when we run this program, it should ask for our name. And when we enter it, it displays a profile with that name and the defaults, okay? So that worked out and we have the basic beginning uh, of our spy profile generation. Top secret, hush hush. Part two. We don't want these things to be redacted when they log in. We want to populate their alias and their secret weapon and their password with interesting things uh, rather than letting the user choose them. And this is where JSON uh, data is going to come in because we'll use that. So what we'll do is we're going to get information from JSON data files and we're going to use randomly choose some element from the data and use that as the alias, the secret weapon and the uh, password. And what, I, what I've got here in the activity is that the alias is going to be an instrument from a, a data file of instrument names. Um, the secret weapon is going to be a common object because that seems amusing to me. And the password is going to come out of tarot card uh, keywords associated with cards. You could obviously use whatever you want. Um, I think you can get all kinds of different results here depending on what you do. Um, so. To do this, we're going to need to open up Darius Kazemi's Corpora project uh, over here, which is great. So we'll be going through here to find the data uh, that we want. But for now, let's, uh, let's follow these steps. So the first thing we need is we're going to need variables to store this data in after it gets loaded because we're going to want to be able to see it in our other functions. So we're going to have tarot data, object data, and instrument data, and that's where we'll load our uh, data into later on. So that's back at the top again, right? So that's the spy profile. Uh, where am I going to put this? I guess I'll put these things afterwards. So uh, let's, I've already forgotten what the first one was, uh, instrument data. Uh, I'm going to explicitly start it out as undefined. I think that's a little bit more professional. Then we have got object data. That's got the going to have the generic object stuff in it. And then we're going to have tarot data, also undefined to begin with. OK, done. Then we're going to load this JSON. So we're going to have to find the URL. Uh, we're going to apparently start by loading the tarot data. It doesn't matter what order we load these in. Um, I will follow these instructions because I wrote them, I suppose. Uh, so we're going to need to find the URL that points to the raw tarot JSON data and then use load JSON uh, to load it into the tarot data variable. So this is just how we load JSON, right? So I need to go find the tarot. Um, now, whenever we're looking for stuff in here, we can go to the data folder here. Uh, and then we can look at these categories. Uh, I happen to know that the tarot stuff is in divination. And there it is there. So there's tarot interpretations.json, JSON. Uh, and this is the file, but this is not the link that we want. So we don't want this link here because this is pointing, as you can see, to like an HTML page that's got, it's all formatted and it displays the file, but it displays a lot of other stuff. What we want is the raw file. So let's click on raw here. That enables us to just find the data itself, right? Nicely formatted. We can see what's in there. Um, and this is the link here, this raw.githubusercontent.com link that we can copy and we can use this link in our load JSON to load it from the website uh, when our program starts. We could also download this file uh, by saving it from our browser and then put it into our project. Um, just for speed and convenience, I'm just going to use the URL itself. So I've copied the URL. I come back over here into preload and I say tarot data which is the variable that's going to hold the data, is assigned load JSON, which loads JSON data, and I paste the URL in. That's where it's going to go get the data from. And really, it's just saying, go and get it from this file, right? It's just that that file happens to be on a computer on the internet, uh, but load JSON is smart enough to go away and do that for us. OK, 
Okay, and we have to do that for the other two things uh, as well. So let's go find the instrument data. Um, just to, so same thing for the object data, same thing for the instrument data. So that's our task right now, right? So we can head back here. Uh, we can go back and back and back to our main data list here. Uh, I said I was looking for instruments. Gosh, I guess that would be in music. Thank goodness I was worried I was going to be searching around for, uh, for ages. Music and then instruments, right? And we can see that returns like a whole lot of, well, not even that many, a few instruments, enough to play around with. Again, we go to raw, we copy this URL up here, and back in our program, uh, we load that information. So instruments data equals is assigned load JSON, and then, oopsie, oh goodness, I lost my, uh, my copy. So I'm gonna go back over here and copy it again, and paste that URL in. And then once more for the object data, we're going to say object data is assigned load JSON. It's going to go in here. We need to go find the URL for just everyday objects. So we go back in our browser, and back and back. And oh, good. Yep. So there's a category here called objects. Uh, there's three things there. I'm going to go for the generic objects uh, JSON here, things like CD and Acorn you know, just objects, get the raw version and copy the link and paste it into here. And there in preload, we're now loading these three JSON uh, files. All of their data is being loaded into our three variables. Again, you can use uh, other JSON files as you wish to generate different kinds of spy profiles. Okay, so we've done this now. The next thing that we need to do is we need to use that data that we've just loaded to create a fun spy profile by adding um, adding these sort of randomly selected data from, from those data files into the spy profile properties uh, of alias, etc. To do that, it makes sense since this is kind of like a modular task that we need to do to write a function that we're going to call generate spy profile. So we're going to define a function. Um, where we define this function, it's going to be something that we're going to want to do in setup. So I'm going to define it here just after setup. So generate spy profile. And what are we going to want to do uh, in here? Well, the first thing that we can do now is that when we're generating a spy profile, that's really when we would ask the user what their name is, because we know that we need to generate a profile and the first thing that we need to know is their name. So we can just move the code that we wrote before inside this function. So here it is here. This line here is the one I want to move. I'm going to do the fancy thing of moving it with a keyboard commands for no good reason, which is command control on a Mac. And then I hit the down arrow like that. And that moved it down into my generate spy profile uh, function. I could have just cut and pasted just as easily. That was uh, gratuitous of me. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's code that we already have that populates the name. Now let's populate the other things. So let's assign a random instrument to the alias property, um, but let's include the word the in front of it. So if the instrument is sitar, we don't want the alias to be sitar, we want the alias to be the sitar or the French horn or <laughs> whatever. Like that sounds like a more impressive alias, right? Um, so how are we gonna do that? Well, we know we wanna set the spy profile the alias property uh, what are we going to assign into it? Well, we know it's something inside the instrument data, right? Um, but when we're using JSON, we need to know how to kind of get into that instrument data. And we also know that we want to choose something random. Um, so let's go look at the instrument data. Um, the easiest way to do that is going to be to just copy this URL here again. I could have left it open and maybe I should have because I was going to need to refer to this. And I'll paste this back into the browser up here. Um, I've got my objects there as well, so that's somewhat useful. So you can see when I look at how this file works that I've got an overarching object here. That's the thing that everything is in. The object has two properties. One is the description, which is not useful to me right now, except that it tells me it's the right file. And the second property is called instruments. And inside that instruments project property is an array, right? We can tell because of the square bracket, and it's an array full of these names. So what I really want to do is choose a random element from this array here that's inside the instruments property. So that tells me what I need to do. 
So I know I want the stuff that's in instrument data dot instruments because that is the array, right? That's the array that contains all of the instrument names. And I want something random from there. So I can wrap that and send it to P5's random function, which will take this array, choose a random element, and then spit it out. And that will end up in the alias property of my profile. Simple as that. Now I've chosen a random instrument. Uh, the other thing though that I said I wanted to do is I wanted to add a the in front of it. Uh, now there are different ways of doing this. Let's do it in two steps. So rather than immediately setting uh, the alias to that, let's do it in two steps. Let's get the instrument first, like that. So our instrument is going to be the randomly selected uh, value from that array. And then let's set my alias to the word the. I'm using a template string again. And then instrument is going to be inserted after that. So the in my template string and then my special notation dollar sign and then curly brackets. The variable name that I just uh, created then with the instrument in it. So if this was French horn, it will say the French horn. If it was bassoon, the bassoon. I hope it's not bassoon when I, uh, when I load my one. I don't want to be called the bassoon. Okay, so we've done that, right? We've chosen a random image, a uh, random instrument, and we have put it in as the alias. Perfection. Uh, now we're going to do the same thing for the secret weapon, uh, but more simply, we're just going to choose a random object and put that into the secret weapon uh, thing. So let's go look at this. So this is the objects uh, .json file. You can see it's the same kind of idea. It's an object. There's a description property, and then there's an object property which has an array that lists a bunch of objects. So we can do the same thing, right? We want a random element from this objects property inside the overall object. So we can say spy profile dot secret weapon, which is the property we want to set. And we don't need any uh, extra steps. We can just say, give me a random element from the objects, uh, object data uh, and the objects property. So the objects property contains that array that lists all of the different common objects. Okay, so we've got name, we've got alias, we've got secret weapon. The final one is the tarot. So let's copy the tarot link just so that we've kind of got it handy when we're going to need it in a second. So we're going to look at the URL just to see what the format is. The tarot format is significantly more complicated. Um, so let's be aware of that and take our time. Choose, so we're going to do this in two steps, okay? We're going to choose a random tarot card first. So the information about a tarot card and we're going to store that in a variable called card. So let's do that first. So we know that we're going to need to create a variable called card. Let card is assigned what? We're going to choose a random card. So we're going to say it's going to be a random something. And we're going to want to provide the array that contains all of the tarot cards in it. So how do we identify that array? So this takes a little bit of interpretation, right? So we can see that there's the overall structure of the object. In that, it's got a, a description property that tells you what this this uh, file is about. And then it's got a tarot interpretations property that contains an array, as you can see here. And the first thing in that array is an object. That's why this curly bracket is here. And it's quite a big object. It goes all the way down to here. So we can select the first one, for example. Um, and it's not immediately obvious necessarily what this object represents, right? The first thing is fortune telling, then keywords, then meanings that maybe starts to tell us, then name the full, right? So what this overall object represents here is a card. This card is the full uh, from the tarot. It's from the major arcana. It's rank is zero. I'm not sure what uh, ranks mean in the tarot. And it's got all of this cool information in it. So what this tells me is that each element in this tarot interpretations array is a tarot card. So that's the array that I want to get my random card out of. So we go back here and we say that I want a random element out of the tarot data dot tarot interpretations array. That's where it's going to come from. Okay. Once I've selected the card, I need to do another step though. Choose a random keyword from the card and assign it to the password property of this by profile. So we know that now we've chosen a random card. Maybe it's the full. Then we're wanting to think about this object. How do I find the keywords? Well, there are just a direct property of the card, right? So the card is this object. Within that, the second property is called keywords. That contains another array, which has these keywords in it. 
and that's the thing we want to choose a random element from. So this is the card, so we want card.keywords, that's where the array is. So that's what we want to put into the profile, so spyprofile.password, which is the thing we're setting, it's going to be a random element from the card, which contains that sub-object, uh, dot, <laughs> I can't remember, keywords, keywords, the keywords property. Okay, so a random keyword is assigned to the property like that. Okay, so we've gone through, we've set the name by asking the user their name, we've set the alias by getting an instrument randomly and then calling it the instrument, we've got a secret weapon by choosing a random object, and we've got a password by selecting a random tarot card from an array and then from within that card choosing a random keyword. So we've done quite a lot, we're really using the data uh, pretty thoroughly. So what does it tell us uh, now? Uh, so that's a good reminder because I wouldn't have remembered this. We need to call the generate spy profile function in setup so that it actually happens. Okay, so let's do that. So in setup, we call generate spy profile, just like that. Uh, let's go and look and see what it does. Top secret hush hush. So let's reload. And what is your name? My name is Pippin Bar. I click OK. Oh, goodness me. That's interesting. I so I can tell you I was not expecting <laughs> the password to look like that. That's kind of horrifying. Uh, but we can see that most of this is working. So name is what I typed in, right? Pippin Bar. Alias is the Zither, which is a pretty cool nickname. Um, that's an instrument with that in front of it. My secret weapon is a matchbook. Also, it seems very sophisticated and terrifying. And my password is... 0.11726103522234665. It's gonna be a little hard to remember. Um, looking at this, I'm not sure whether it's the case that I've made a mistake or that just is a value in one of the keywords and that there's just a mistake in the file. Um, so let's, uh, let's reload this. Although I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that looks more like a random number to me. Um, so maybe that's what I need to take a look at here. Uh, so let me reload it anyway. Yeah, so I've got another number here. This is suggesting to me that I've made a mistake in my program somewhere. The pipe organ is quite good. Uh, and I'm putting a random number in the password instead of putting the information that I was getting out of the tarot deck. So let's go and eyeball this. Um, so the card is a randomly selected... Oh, so there's a typo in here. That's all that I guess that this is. So it's tarotdata.com tarot underscore interpretations. Interpretations is what I wanted, right? Um, that's enough to, I guess, I would guess to screw the whole thing up. This would be undefined because I had a typo. I guess that would mean that card would be undefined and then I guess, or card's just a number and then, I don't know, I don't know why that happened, but that's uh, that seems to be the problem. So let's try this again. Ah, there we go, that's much better. So now we've got all of them. Pippin Bar, the theremin, very cool. The secret weapon is a small pouch, which I'm uh, struggling to imagine. And now my password is one of these keywords, which is adolescence. That's a very nice, uh, a very nice password to have. It's memorable. Okay. So now we've got this power, right, of generating a profile. The next step that we want to be able to do is instead of just always generating a new profile every time we arrive at this top secret hush hush uh, website, we would like to generate it once and then when the user comes back, they can see the same profile so that it's stable. Because uh, you don't change your profile every time uh, you, you reload a website. So that's what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to save it uh, when, we, uh, when we generate it and then we want to load it when the program starts to, to check if there's already one there. Okay, so the first thing that it makes sense to do is when we generate a profile, we should save the profile. So we're going to do this at the end of the generate spy profile function because that's that's where we're generating them. And to do so, we're going to use set item uh, and we're going to set an item to literally just save the spy profile object to local storage. That's going to be the value. And we're going to come up with a key um, that we use to name that saved data. I'm calling it spy-profile-data here. Uh, and importantly, as I am being reminded here by myself, uh, make sure that we, we need to make sure that we stringify the object that we're saving first um, or it won't be represented properly when we save it. Um, that's a, it's a really important step. So let's do that. So after the spy profile has been generated, we've populated all of the, uh, the properties, we want to save it. 
we can do this all in one line. So local storage is the object that knows how to save things. Set item is the method that does the saving. The first thing we provide is the key. So spy profile data, I'm going to call it. And the second thing is the thing that we want to save, uh, but we need to stringify it first. So json.stringify is the method that we can use to uh, turn an object into a string. And the thing that we want to save after stringifying it is the spy profile object that we've just been populating uh, here. So that is going to save my profile uh, when, I, when I load the page. So if I go back here and I reload, very good, um, that's now been saved into the browser. Uh, it doesn't make much difference right now because it always saves it into the browser, but it's being saved, uh, at least in theory, into local storage. Okay. Now, when a profile is generated, it's going to be saved, but to make use of it, we have to take the classic step that we, that we need to take when we have programs that save and load data, which is when the program starts, generally we want to check, is there data already available? Is there a saved profile? So we try to load it first. If there is one, then we'll use the saved profile, and if there isn't one, then we'll generate a profile. So let's do that uh, back in setup. So the first thing we want to do is we don't want to automatically generate a profile anymore, so we're going to delete that. Uh, generate profile call for the moment. We'll call it uh, later on. So what do we want to do in setup? The first thing that we want to try and do is we want to try and load a profile just to see if there is one. So we have to try to load it to find out if there is one there or not. Uh, to do that we're going to use get item with the same key that we used when we were saving and we're going to use json.pass to make sure that we convert it back from a, a, away from being a string which is what um, get item creates and convert it back into being an object, which is what we want. So let data is assigned json.parse. Uh, and what are we going to pass? We're going to pass local storage.get item. What are we going to get? We're going to get the thing saved at spy profile data if there is something there. Okay? So that's what's going to happen here. So this is attempting to load the data. Um, but depending on when this is being called, like what the state of the program is, there might be some spy profile data saved there or there might not. So we have to check, right? That's the next, that's the next step. Write an if statement to check if there is data in the data variable. If there is, that, i.e. there was a saved profile, then we should copy the data across into the spy profile object so that we update it. And if there is not any data in the data uh, object, then we should generate a profile. So let's do those two steps. So the first thing is, is there any data? So if data, we can explicitly check here if data does not equal null, if we want to, uh, and that's reasonable to do. Or we can just say if data, because null is technically false. Um, I'll do it like this explicitly, just, to, just because we can. So if the data is not null, that means there is some saved data. If there is saved data, then we want to copy it into the spy profile. So spyprofile.name equals data.name, spyprofile.alias equals data.alias, spyprofile.secretweapon is assigned data.secretweapon, and spyprofile.password is assigned data.password. Um, you might think that it would be easier to just do spyprofile is assigned data, uh, but you'll run into problems if you do that. It's much better to explicitly copy across the properties in this case. Um, this one will cause some trouble. Now you can ask me about it at some point if you want to. So that's what we're going to do if there is data saved already. Else, after that if statement, if there isn't data saved already, what should we do? Let's see. We should call generate profile. So generate profile. Suppose spy profile. It's generate spy profile, not just any profile. Uh, and that is it. So let's head back over here. So Pippin Bar, alias the violin, secret weapon is a candle, I guess that's uh, believable, and password is resistance. Now if I reload the page, I get the same thing, right? Because that data has been saved. It was saved uh, earlier on when I was working on the saving part of things. So now every time I load the page, that if statement is finding that there is data, and it's loading the data into the spy profile. So I never see a different profile anymore because it knows who I am. I am the violin, obviously. Perfect. So that's already a pretty nice uh, program, really. So 
the first time someone comes here, it comes up with a profile for them, and then every time they come back, uh, it just tells them what their profile is so that they can remember their top secrets by profile. However, it would be nice to take another step, uh, which is we, so we have a password, so let's check the password to make sure that the spy is the spy that we think they are. Uh, that would be fancy, and it's a nice thing to kind of do. This is obviously not actually very secure uh, in terms of internet security, uh, but it's fun anyway. So we need to think about where we would do this, right? Um, if we look at our program, where would we check um, their password? We can't check their password right away uh, because we don't even know if they have a password yet, right? So we can't do it there. Um, we can't do it immediately after loading the data because we don't yet know if there is data. Uh, what we need to do is we only want to check their password if we loaded the data and it's not null, i.e. there is data there. That means that they do have a password. So if we know that they have a password, that's our opportunity to ask them if, them if they know what it is. Okay. So we're going to do it in the if statement there. So we're going to declare a variable called password and we're going to assign it to the the return value of another prompt, right? So we're going to ask them, what's your password using a prompt? So let password, which is going to be where we save what they say it is, is prompt. Uh, agent, what is your password? With urgency again. Um, so that's going to ask for the password. And then we need to check if they got it right. Um, we can go over here and see that this works. If I reload the, reload the page, agent, what is your password? It's asking me this because it loaded my data and saw that I do have a, a profile already. So we need an if statement that checks whether the password that they type in is the same as the password in the data that we just loaded. Um, so let's do that. So if the password, which they just typed in, is the same thing as the data.password, uh, note that we're not using spyprofile.password here because we haven't populated the profile yet. We want to hide it from them until we know that they have uh, authorization. So we check it with the data object that we just loaded and the password on there. So if they typed in the same password as was in the data that we just loaded, what should we do? Well, if it matches, then we should do what we were doing before, which is that we can accept that they know their password. I can't remember my password. It was resistance. Okay, thank goodness. <laughs> that would have been so terrible. Uh, resistance. Let's all remember that. So remember your password as well. You probably you have a different one. Goodness me. Um, if it matches, then we want to populate the profile. So we can just move the code that we already have into that part of the if statement, right? So let's grab this code here and paste it in here. So if they get the password right, then we can safely populate the profile with the data and show it to them and all as well. If it doesn't, um, we could do other stuff, like we could uh, get, send an angry message to them or something. Um, but let's just do nothing. So there's no else here. We'll just ignore it. If they don't have the, the right password, we're going to ignore this. They're not going to see the new data. And that means they'll see the default data, which is just all of the redacted stuff, right? OK. Um, and that's it. Let's, uh, let's, go, let's go see if this works. So let's reload this. What's your password? So if I remember that it's resistance and type that in correctly, I see my password, uh, sorry, my profile, Pippin Bar, the violin, candle, password is resistance. If I were to load this page and not know my password, password and I'm like, I think it's adolescence, adolescence uh, and I hit that, it's wrong. And so I just see redacted information. I can't find out the profile. Wonderful. Holy moly, that's pretty cool. Um, so we've got like a spy profile generator with password protection, spy stuff. Uh, and that's it. That's where I wanted to get to with this example. Uh, remaining things that you could do, you can always improve these programs. Uh, most obviously, just moving blocks of code into functions. We've got this block of code that's all about setting up the spy data if, you're, if you've loaded some, so, which is this stuff here, right? That could be moved into a function, I think, um, quite reasonably, rather than having it just sitting right here. Uh, that's kind of the main one though. The other thing that we could do is set some more variables and constants. Um, we could have constants for the URLs, for the JSON data. Uh, we could also have a constant to track that key name that we're using for the saved data since we use it in two places, right? We use it for get item and for set item, so it might be better if it's a constant. Uh, but by and large, there's not as much to do here. It's not, uh, it's not too long of a program. Uh, and as with any program, there's lots and lots of other fun things that you could do uh, now that we have this basic kind of structure. And I invite you 
uh, very much to, to, to pursue that and to think of ways that you could make this uh, a cooler and more interesting uh, kind of experience. So, in case you forgot, this is what I look like uh, at the moment. Don't know what happened. Uh, that's the, the spy profile generator activity. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that I look different soon. I was not really ready for that. Okay, bye for now. See you in the next video.